Hello and welcome to Your Golf Channel. My name is Jed Walters. I'm your resident PGA professional. Today's video is the top five tips for beginner golfers. Let's dive in. So tip number one is all about the grip. The function of the grip is to control the club face because the golf ball is going to start closest to where the club face points at impact. So things that are important are making sure that the club face is aiming in the direction that you want the ball to start when you take your grip. I see loads and loads of people who take their grip and the club face is pointing in different directions to the one that they want to address it to. So making sure that you get the club face pointing in that direction before you take hold is very important. Now what we want to do is make sure that when we take our grip, the lead hand positions the handle across from the joint of the index finger and the base of the palm of the hand, and we're going to go across this way. So the club is going to sit across there just like that and then we can place top of the hand and the thumb on the top. <clears throat> the thumb will sit just down the right center for me as a right-handed golfer because my left hand is my top hand. If you're a left-handed player your thumb is going to sit down the left side center. Now <clears throat> a lot of people have what we call a long thumb so as we look there we can see how the thumb is extended down against a short thumb where it is withdrawn in. The difference from the side as you can see there is the long thumb is all the way across and a short thumb is a little bit here. What happens with a long thumb is when you get to the top of the backswing it can enable the weight of the head to be less supportive so the weight of the head can drop down. Can give you an image of maybe an overswing if you like a longer club. Whereas when you have a short thumb we've got more pressure so you have more support because there's actually more pressure on the short thumb than there is with the long thumb so that can help prevent losing control a little bit of the club head at the top of the backswing now when we place the trail hand for me as right hand on what we want to do is we want to get lifeline and as we create this little sort of catching mitt pad here we want to place that on top of the thumb closing the fingers around in here and then the thumb of the trail hand will be a little bit down angled towards the left side of center you will notice here the V created between the index finger and the thumb is pointing up towards my trail shoulder. With my left hand it points up towards sort of chin to collarbone area, so in this section here. Um, a couple of ways that we can link the hands together, so the overlap which we have here, we can have an interlock in there as well. The interlock can be quite dangerous because I see people wanting to interlock the fingers all the way in there. Now when you've got hold of the golf club when you do that that sends your hand all the way underneath and that can really affect how you can control the golf club as we go through. The idea behind creating this sort of neutral hold is it gives us the best opportunity to be able to function. It gives us the greatest freedom to be able to hinge the wrists naturally without having to compensate bending elbows because the function and the amount of movement in the wrist isn't as good. So to get the amount of hinge we use the elbows to get the club into the position. So making sure we have that neutral, if you like, grip, that gives us the ability to hinge the club and that is also going to give you the ability to generate more speed with your hands as you come through impact. Tip number two, setup. The key to the setup is making sure that when you position the body you have a little bit more pressure towards your lead side than you do your trail side when you're using your irons. So if we think about an iron swing, the ball is on the ground, we want to try and get some ground contact, but we want that contact in the right place. So setting ourselves in the right place to encourage that is really important. So 
What we want to look for is a shoulder width stance, toes turned out slightly because that's going to give you a little bit more freedom in your rotation. It's going to help you in your backswing and your downswing. Now, if we think about how we take our setup, we want to hinge from the waist. So it's almost like pushing back with the bottom of your spine and here, pushing it back. So you get that little forward hinge, then allowing the arms to fall, soft knees, and let the club just sit on the ground like so. So from here, we've got a really nice setup position. As a reference, distance away from the body and the end of the club is about a hand's width or a natural arm hang. You can see if I let my arm hang and it just goes back into the place pretty much where it's come from. If I'm a little bit too close into the golf ball and I try that, then you can see that the hands aren't going to meet and we're not going to get that union in the grip. If I'm too far away and I'm really stretched, as that happens, then it comes in and joins the lead hand. So as that reference point, so we're going to have that width of stance, shoulder width, toes turned out, standing up straight, pushing the bottom of your spine away from your golf ball, allow your arms just to hang down, a little soft in the knees, and there we have our posture. Now we know we want to be a little bit into pressure on the lead side, so for me my left side rather than my trail side because I have a, an iron in my hands. Now what we don't want to be doing is leaning this way. Remember pressure is through the floor. So if I stand here now, if I lift my right foot off the ground, I have 100% of my pressure in my left foot. I'm not leaning over, I'm just 100% on my left side. If I was to do the other, that would be 100% on the right side. So what we're looking for is how much we push into the floor relative to the lead foot, for me the left foot, um, against my right foot. So I'm pushing into the floor with a little bit more force on this foot here. Now, an easy way of sort of imagining this happening would be if you were stood on a little seesaw, a little platform. So if you were on the platform, you would have the left side of that platform ever so slightly down, the right side would be slightly up and you would have more pressure on that side. If we go through this routine all the time, then we're going to get ourselves in the right position to be able to execute the swing. Now when it comes to the position that we want the golf ball relative to your feet, I've got a 7-9 here. So if we said we're going to use three different ball positions. So we would look at most lofted clubs right in the middle, in here. So you've got, I would say, your 8-iron, your 9-iron, your pitching wedge, your sand wedge. If you carry a lob wedge, they can be right in the middle. To create that, if we were to stand with our feet together, we move both feet the same distance apart, so we've got that shoulder width, that golf ball now is in the middle. Now, 7-iron, 6-iron, 5-iron if you carry one, or your hybrids into your 4-iron, for hybrid, if you're carrying those clubs, we're going to use the ball position slightly further forward. So, again, with the same premise, if we moved one third, two thirds, that ball position is going to be a little bit more here, and that's going to help that slightly longer shaft, the slightly lower loft, be able to launch better, and also for you to be able to get the club face pointing at your target at the right point. Then if you are into your fairway wood, so when we're looking at, um, say, your seven wood, your five wood, some of you guys might have three wood. Three wood can be a difficult club to use as a beginner, but definitely those seven woods uh, and five woods, we want to be using them a little bit more in this point here. So again, if we were in position, we could just go a couple of inches of movement with your lead foot, create the rest of the stance with your trail foot, and you'd have that ball position there. So from your lofted fairway woods, long irons and hybrids, short irons. Those ball positions are going to give you the best uh, chance of being able to present the golf club at your target and being able to launch the ball and hit some good shots. Tip number three, a 
take away the start of the swing, the start of the backswing. Now, one thing that I see quite a lot of, and it gets a lot of people into trouble, so once they're in their good setup position, is they move the golf club round really low with the arms. Now some do it with their hands this way, some roll the forearms and that even rolls the club face wide open. You can see the club face is almost facing the camera there. So what I want you to do is I want you to feel, because we have the ability now to hinge the club upwards with our good grip, I want you to feel like the club moves back away from the golf ball and up at the same time. So when the golf club is parallel to the ground and almost sitting on top of the toe line that you set up with, you would have this image. Now, the club can be a little turned in, so the toe end of the golf club here, a little forward or in here is a good position. We don't want to see too much of this, there's rolling the golf club open, so you've got to manipulate that when you're coming back. So we want to feel from our good hand position that we're hinging up and the arms have moved back a little bit and that gets us into this space. So we do that together. So we move the arms back, we hinge the wrists upwards and that gets us into this position here. Okay, we could use a reference you could use a stick, you could use a golf club, you could put something just down along your toe line or just in front of your toe line as a reference for you to be able to try and match up. As long as you can get this here and not this or this, you will start the club in the right way, which will help you develop the backswing, but more importantly, bring the club back into impact. Tip number four, the role of the body in the backswing. How we pivot is vital to being able to hit successful golf shots. And one thing I see lots of is this kind of movement with the body. So we see, rather than a turn, we see a sway, pressure into the trail side and we end up somewhere like this that is really difficult for you to be able to execute consistently good golf shots also seeing people going this way is just as dangerous what we're looking to do and we see here is we want the sternum and the center of the pelvis and the hips to remain relatively close with their relationship. Now, if I start to sway over here, then we can see that that relationship has changed lots. So if we want to keep them relatively close, to realign that, there's going to be a lot of movement back here first before anything can really happen in the downswing. Vice versa, if we go this way, that will happen or if we go this way which is another common one for a beginner where nothing really happens here and we keep bent forward with the upper body so the key really is to feel that the hips are rotating in a circle so your trail hip pocket feels like it rotates behind you. So remember from our setup, we're pushing the base of the spine away from the golf ball. Well, if we were to turn the trail hip pocket, for me the right hip pocket, towards where the base of the spine is behind, what you'll see is the structure of my legs will remain here. It will just change slightly as the trail leg loses some of that flex that we have at the start and the lead leg increases some of that flex. So the relationship between pelvis and sternum, they keep themselves relatively intact. So I've got my movement of the club, I have my rotation of the hips 
and I get into this centered looking position at the top of the backswing where my body is relatively still over the middle of my stance and my relationship between my pelvis and my shoulders and sternum is still very similar. So from here, I'm in a great position to be able to execute the golf shot that mentally I see in my mind. Tip number five, the downswing. Now, most common things, especially for beginning golfers, is trying to get the golf ball in the air. Um, and by trying to get the golf ball in the air, we try and scoop. So we get the golf club working this way. So relative to a golf ball being on the ground, that is a move away from the direction you want the golf ball to go in. And then scoop, flipping the golf club with the hands this way as we try and lift it off the ground. Now, the one thing when the golf ball is on the ground means that the golf ball is actually sitting on the earth. So it's very, very difficult to actually get the club itself underneath it. We can get the leading edge and maybe a couple of grooves up the leading edge um, fairly low, below the equator of the golf ball, but we can't quite get underneath it. The execution of good golf shots means that you would hit the ground on the target side of your golf ball. In fact, it's more important, it's vital that you hit the ground target side of the golf ball than it is you hit the ball. Because if you can do this, then the golf club and the golf ball have already got in each other's way and the golf ball is gone. You've hit the shot. So the focus should be on hitting the ground. For me as a right-handed golfer, left side of the golf ball. If you're a left-handed golfer, you'd be hitting on the right-hand side. Now, for us to successfully be able to do that, the body has to be moving towards the target. So once we've made our really nice backswing and we've got our really nice rotation here, we need the pressure of the body to start moving towards the target. So for me, to the left. If I can move the pressure of the body to the left, then I'm moving the lowest point of the golf swing, as long as I retain the structure in my arms, I'm moving that down to the left hand side so I can hit the ground over here. So I can collect the golf ball and hit the ground and then continue that movement all the way through and into the finish. So I've got 95% of my body's pressure into my left heel and my right foot up on a tiptoe because the body's rotated right hips are rotated, torsos rotated. So the downswing, we must rotate the body, so we must rotate the hips and the torso as we continue that pressure movement towards the target into the finish. If you can do this and resist the temptation to try and lift it, falling backwards, you're gonna start hitting a lot of really good golf shots very, very quickly, and it will really improve your game. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I hope it helps you as a beginner golfer tidy up some of those key areas. If you did enjoy it, please click the thumbs up button. That lets me know that you're enjoying the content. Also, post your comments in the box below about this video or about a video you'd like me to make that would help you along your journey. Finally, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Just click the subscribe button down here, and also while you're there, click the notification bell, and that will notify you next time and every time that we post a video here on your golf channel. Finally, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next lesson.